Well, our top story, a day after India and China agreed to start the process of disengagement along the line of actual control in Ladakh, high-resolution satellite images acquired by NDTV appear to show the presence of Chinese structures around the line of actual control in the Galwan River Valley just two days back. The images that we have acquired are from some of the top satellite operators in the world. We've not taken these off Twitter, as many others have. In clashes there in the Galwan Valley on the 15th of June, 20 Indian soldiers were killed in action. The images that you will now see from Maxar and Planet Labs shows a massive sustained Chinese buildup, not just in Galwan, but actual tank and artillery positions in the Gogra area, not too far from Indian posts. But first, let's bring you the area that we are talking about. The area has the Shok River on the left, you can see the Galwan River marked out prominently in blue. The site of the clash of the 15th of June is marked and then the red is all important. It is the line of actual control. And the pictures that we will actually show you are largely from near that site of the clash. However, it's important to point out at the very onset that the line of actual control hasn't been delineated between India and China. Therefore, the area where we show you images appears to have Chinese constructions on the Indian side. Others would say that it is squarely on the line of actual control. Be that as it may, the Chinese have a foothold into the Galwan River Valley and they can clearly look down the river valley at potential Indian posts. So the first image. The first image is uh, one that is off the 22nd of May. This is very close to the line of actual control in the Galwan Valley. There is a single white tent that's thought to be a Chinese tent. Now compare that with this image from the 22nd of June, just two days back. As you can see, there is a massive difference in that same spot. Multiple structures are visible and it is possible that some of these are on the Indian side of the line of control. But again, I re-emphasize the definition of the LAC is not clear because it's not been delineated by either side, which is part of the problem India and China face. So let's compare the image of the 22nd of June that you saw with the uh, 22nd of May. On the 22nd of May on the top, a single white tent. On the 22nd of June, multiple structures right on the LAC. Let's move on now to road construction. On the 16th of June, satellite images, which NDTV reported, showed Chinese bulldozer activity about 600 meters from the line of actual control in Galwan. We thought that the Chinese were trying to stop the flow of the Galwan River. Indeed, they did for a period of time. But now new images have emerged of just two days back. So let's show you what those images show. They show that, in fact, a culvert has been constructed. That culvert ensures that the Galwan River flows underneath it, so it's a small bridge. Why would anybody construct a bridge unless they wanted the movement of men or heavy vehicles in this area? In fact, a part of the road to the right has appears to now be a blacktop road. This would be about 400 meters from the line of actual control, and there is the presence of heavy vehicles as well. So again, let's compare on the 16th of June, bulldozer activity. Less than a week after that, a culvert is constructed and there's the presence of heavy earth-moving equipment as well. The next image we can show you is of a PLA base in the Galwan Valley. These are high-resolution images of the 22nd of May. By the time that the next set of images came, this particular post wasn't there, which begs the question, where then are the Chinese soldiers? Have they in fact moved to the ridge line on the either side, thereby getting a dominating view of Indian positions? What you see now is a different area. The Gogra post lies to the south and southeast of the line of actual control at Galwan, which I was describing. But directly north of the Gogra post, which lies on the line of actual control, is a Chinese tank and artillery position just on the Chinese side of the line of actual control, but as I will explain, very, very close to Indian posts. So what do those pictures actually show us? Well, it shows us this. Tanks, 12 of them on the left, and artillery guns in this one position on the right. If you believe that these pictures aren't clear enough, take a look at this. The close-up of the tanks. 12 tanks over there 
absolutely clearly visible. And if you feel you needed greater clarity on the artillery gun positions, then there you are. This is an entire artillery gun position, approximately 12 guns over here. You could ask the Indian post at Gogra, which was there on the map, was 12 kilometers away, which means it was far away. Well, then here's a reality check. These guns can fire to a range of 35 to 40 kilometers, putting many posts like Gogra well inside their targeting area. So that's what's happening on the line of actual control. That's what India and China are now trying to disengage. Joining us now, two fantastic guests, uh, Meera Shankar, the former Indian envoy to the United States, and Major General Ramesh Chandrapadi. He's the former additional Surveyor General of India, perhaps India's finest cartographer. General Padi, um, the line of actual control has not been delineated in that area. So the construction activity we showed could be on their side, it could be on our side. I think it's fair to say it's squarely on the line of actual control or around that area. But what does that construction activity itself show you? What do the pictures show you of what the Chinese are doing right next to India's claim areas? Yeah, uh, thank you. I've gone through the, all the images. I've very minutely examined. Now, what I have seen is uh, a lot of heavy vehicles, which are normally used to carry engineering equipment and other stores. So that, that naturally, when you are using heavy vehicles, it is used for definitely for construction of some maybe bunkers or some other activities. Then also I could see that the, there is an increase in the activities. So I could see the tanks, I could see the uh, heavy artillery guns which are towed by heavy vehicles. Then there is an increase of the number of uh, barracks in that area. So that shows that uh, there is an increase in the activities from the other side, from our adversaries. Ambassador Shankar, the scale of Chinese yeah. construction in uh, the Galwan area Again, let's accept that it, it, it may well be on their side of the LAC, but just about on their side, where even a road is being blacktopped, as some of the in images seem to indicate today, would suggest that the Chinese have no intention from moving away from that area. Therefore, even if there is de-escalation, can we expect a sizable Chinese presence right on the LAC? Uh, firstly, let me say, that, uh, you know, I'm not a technical expert to be able to assess uh, where uh, these uh, fortifications and constructions have taken place. But uh, it's clear, fairly clear, that China intruded into several sectors uh, across the LAC onto the Indian side, whether it was in Galwan or Hot Springs or uh, Pangan So, particularly, and uh, a little bit in num uh, in uh, in Sikkim, so uh, we uh, uh, of course claim that uh, after our soldiers uh, took on the Chinese in Ga in the Galwan Valley, uh, that no Chinese presence is there on our side of the LAC at the present. But uh, if you will recall that the last time we agreed to a disengagement and de-escalation process. And both sides said it would be a phased process beginning with Galwan. Instead, what we saw was, uh, uh, you know, the Chinese attacking uh, our soldiers who had gone to clarify why a Chinese tent had been rebuilt after it had been withdrawn. So uh, clearly uh, there was deception there was uh, perhaps um, some uh, uh, gap in the perceptions of the two sides also as regards what was the kind of disengagement that both had agreed to. Sure. So now we have, we've had another round of talks and we have again agreed to disengage uh, beginning with Galvan and hot springs and going on perhaps we also discussed pangang so 
but uh, uh, no agreement as yet on so, this engagement. So, Ambassador, I take, I take your point. It, it, as... So, what I would like to say is that uh, given our past experience, uh, we have to be prepared and to test whether the Chinese uh, agreement to disengage will be implemented in good faith or whether we are going to be faced with another situation like we were in Galwan. Right. Now, this Ambassador, one moment. I just want to, I just want to Ambassador, go back to, to General Party because I need to move on uh, in a little while from now. General, uh, is it your belief, General, that given what you've seen on the ground in terms of the construction, uh, the tarring of the roads, the creation of culverts, the movement of heavy vehicles, that in the Galwan Valley, the Chinese intend to stay, it wouldn't make sense otherwise. Yes, I agree with you, because why, why are they moving in the heavy vehicles? Naturally, they are uh, carrying with a uh, lot of engineering equipment and other, other loads, which will be used subsequently for uh, longer stay. Otherwise, for normal infantry people, they don't need such heavy vehicles. And it requires that they are transporting a lot of other equipment, other than which we cannot really judge from the images. But since heavy, heavy vehicles are being used, so naturally, and, and since we have seen the presence of uh, armored vehicles, uh, artillery guns, so that requires ammunition. So that means they are carrying the whole lot of supplies, both in terms of ration, ammunition and everything they must be carrying to that area. They want to keep it for the winter seasons which will be coming after a few months. Right. Well, I'd like to thank you, General and uh, Ambassador Shankar, uh, very much for joining us. Uh, I think it's quite thank clear you. that as India tries to disengage, it's not going to necessarily be a very easy process. But let's hope that there is peace on both sides.